So let's see if we can solve this uh, XOR uh, function uh, using a one layer neural network. So our neural network I'm going to write it down as f of x is equal to f2 of f1 of x where this x is the inputs x1, x2, two boolean variables correct x1 and x2 and um, and so for each layer so what is f1 of x we are going to write f1 of x as this is the input layer uh, it's basically w transpose x w1 transpose x plus some bias term and um, f2 of x this is f1 and I am sorry let me just redo this f1 and f2 of x would be uh, w2 transpose um, h plus b ok. So, this is our um, this is this is our neural network right. So, we have first first layer weights uh, w1 second layer weights w2 which maps to the output. So, we have um, for a pair of inputs we have exactly one output right. So, f the y is the output of the um, uh, xor gate given these two binary uh, inputs right. So, in between uh, we are going to uh, also have the non-linearity because um, let me just go to another thing. So, we are going to rewrite this. So, we have f1 of x is w1 transpose x plus c and then we are going to this is your z and then your h is g of z and then your output y hat is nothing but um, w2 transpose of h plus some b ok. This is the general form that we will be using for um, you know uh, the truth table for xor exclusive or function ok. Now, if we do uh, the uh, computation this way will it help ok. So, um, once again we will just see uh, we will fix the weights and do this. So, uh, you know for the problem that we are going to do we with our neural network will look like the following. So, we have x1 I will use a different color actually x1 we have x2 right and uh, we will have two hidden units not unlike what I showed you when we are using all the boolean operations right and uh, not surprising right. So, here we have two hidden units ok. From there we have output which is your y ok. This is the flow and the other way of looking at it is the following um, let us go to the next slide. So, here we have your x as input ok. So, then we have your matrix w 1 to get your hidden vector h from which you have another matrix w 2 to get you to your output y. Of course, implicit in that is that there is a non-linearity sitting inside ok. So, the non-linearity is implicit. So, this is another way of um, writing the same um, neural network ok. So, if we um, use the non-linearity as ReLU we can do that ok and if you fix the weights maybe we will see how what kind of results we get right. So, I, I leave it to you to do the computations. So, let us see let us write our neural network down in terms of you know in, uh, in terms of function. So, it is f of x now the parameters are w1 c w2 and b ok and we are using a, a non-linearity which is the ReLU which is max of 0 comma x right we know that. So, we what we have is this is equal to w2 transpose right this is the second this is the output layer of 
let's let me write let me use a different color here so that it's of max of zero comma um, w one transpose of x plus c. Okay, this is the hidden unit. This is h. After you apply the nonlinearity, this is the nonlinearity. This is the ReLU that we are so. This max zero comma x is basically uh, the ReLU plus the bias term for the output can be. Okay, so this is what uh, this is our neural network basically. Okay, um, so we can actually write down the solution. Um, so the computations I leave it to you. Then be that will be the questions in the homework. So apparently we can fix w to be one 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 one, um, c to be zero minus one, and w to be one comma minus two. Okay, and b can be equal to zero. Okay, so uh, you can like I said, you can fix the bias. So <laughs> in this case, for the same layer, your set of biases. And maybe usually we usually use one bias for every layer. Okay, so now you can walk through each one of the outputs. So it turns out that instead of x w transpose x, you can just do the x w also. Okay, so what is x? So if you write that down, x is you have the inputs right x one, x two, again x one, x two, zero 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 one one zero one one, right? This is your x. Okay, so you can now do uh, you know either uh, this is again uh, how you write your inputs. So you can uh, either do W transpose X or just do X W. Add the uh, bias vector and um, and then get the results. So let me just write to the results. Okay. So then if you do that X W for the first layer, you will get zero minus one one zero. One zero two one. Again, you should do the computations. Okay. Um, so, so to 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 finish computing the value of h, we have to now on this we apply ReLU on this. So, if you apply ReLU point wise, which is what we discussed, so you will get zero zero one zero one zero two one. Right. Then uh, we finish by multiplying with the weight vector w two. So we can um, again. I leave it to you to I leave it to you to apply w two. Um, then you can get the result as zero one one zero. So with this arbitrary choice of weights, we are able to get this right. So you actually do the matrix multiplication. You know, see whether you get the w's in correct order. Um, whether you know we can do W transpose X or X W, what should be the dimensions, etc. By actually working out this by hand. Okay. So again, this uh, exactly what happens here is you know um, if you look at the intermediate outputs, you will be able to see that the H, this is your H. After you apply the ReLU, after you apply the ReLU, this is your H space. Okay. So you can see that two zero one and one zero again have been mapped into one value. Correct. That's what has happened, and so then, then it's easier to uh, see, which is what I showed you when we use the Boolean operations, where we split, uh, we express the uh, XOR gate as a function of two other gates to have an intermediate layer of uh, of uh, Boolean calculations, and this is pretty much what happened there too, right? So your if your input in your input these two uh, rows corresponded to zero one and one zero. And if you do once you do the x w right that it got mapped into the same, okay. After we, and in fact after we added the bias vector, they got mapped to the same point one zero, right. So that's what helps the uh, calculation. So you can you know do things like what if you don't have the nonlinearity and for instance what if you didn't do ReLU what happens so on and so forth right. All that all those calculations you can do. So this is just to walk you through the exact sequence of computations. Uh, um, you can also do similar computations for you know you can 
um, make up a dummy data set where you can work with hand and actually do the forward prompt. So, so far what we have only looked at is input multiply by weight matrix, apply non-linearity, get an output, so on and so forth till you get to the output and we looked at different kinds of output, right? We looked at, um, so for instance, we looked um, output, real output, we had a binary classification, okay, where we interpreted this as a Bernoulli parameter. Bernoulli parameter, right? And then we have one of K classification and this came up to be softmax, okay? We will do the softmax output. So now we have these outputs, right? We still have to create this loss function or cost function. We looked at mean square error when we did the um, the uh, linear regression problem, but for um, for these classification problems, uh, the loss function will be slightly different. So even in the case of neural network, if you are going to do uh, regression problems, then in this case you can still do y minus y hat square as your loss. Okay, that's going to be okay. Um, on the other hand, if you are going to be doing either binary classification or one or clay classification, you would end up doing this log loss. Okay, negative log loss, negative log loss and this um, uh, we can sometimes you know if, if you have multiple classes uh, you can call this binary or even for two, two class problems you sometimes refer to as also can um, call it binary cross entropy, okay. Some version of that is what you use. So we will look at you know uh, the different loss functions in the next class and um, you know how they behave and you know generally talk about you know back propagation the algorithm which helps you do great which helps you update the parameters of your network. So remember when we looked at linear regression we did gradient descent where we managed to update the parameters you know the w's in the linear regression uh, model uh, using gradient descent. So similarly for uh, neural networks we should be able to do it but then slightly more complicated uh, because of the different layers of computation and in that case you know how do we actually calculate the delta w's right. So we have to update the weights in every iteration and how do we do that? The what enables us to do that is the calculating the delta w's, the back propagation algorithm helps us do that um, and the gradient of uh, descent is the basically the learning algorithm right. So it, we can calculate the gradient of the loss function but how we propagate it to all the weights that change in the weights, the back propagation algorithm which will do that. So we will get like a brief look, brief look at these issues in the next week of classes. And also following that we will immediately run into uh, convolutional neural networks for image analysis and uh, 3D image analysis and so on and so forth. Okay. Thank you.